Greetings, Pokéfans! Michael here, and at the time of filming this video, Pokémon GO has been out for almost a week, and it's blown up. It, it's amazing. I love how much it's blown up. And in that week, I have learned a lot about the game that I didn't know when I first started. So in this video, I'm gonna go around and try and catch some Pokémon and maybe take on some gyms, but I'm also gonna give you guys some really awesome tips and tricks that I have learned and come up with over the course of making this video. So, let's get started. So the first trick I want to teach you guys is how to level up really fast. It's really important that you gain levels because as you become a higher level, you get access to better Pokemon. So how this works is there are three Pokemon that level up really, or that evolve with only 12 candies, okay? And those are Caterpie, Weedle, and Pidgey. They only require 12 candies to evolve, which is the least out of any of them and you get the same amount of experience points no matter which Pokemon you evolve. So what you do is you build up a bunch of Caterpie and Weedle and Pidgey candy, and then you activate a Lucky Egg, which doubles your experience points for 30 minutes. So I have that going. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and evolve these Caterpies, Weedles, and Pidgeys all at once. But I'm also gonna do some evolutions of Pokemon that I need to evolve that I don't have yet because it's good to save your evolutions for when you have activated a lucky egg. So I'll scroll down this Nidoran female right here. She is something that I want to evolve. So I'm going to evolve her. Do I want to evolve Nidoran? Yes, I do. So what's great about this is that I get double experience points from evolving it, but I also get new experience because it's a brand new Pokemon. So watching this really cool animation of my female Nidoran evolving, and now I have a Nidorina, which is, which is great because like a lot of times there are Pokemon you probably don't want to waste the candies evolving, like, um, like a Pidgeotto into a Pidgeot. You can find wild Pidgeots pretty regularly, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but there are, are certain Pokemon, I've never seen a wild need arena, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to evolve, or to, for me to try and wait for one. So now that I have all these Pidgeys, I have 108 Pidgey candy, which means I can evolve nine Pidgeys. Each gives you 500 experience points, doubled by the lucky egg. So this is going to be a lot of experience points. And I'm not gonna show you all of this, because that would be a long time in this video, but it's, it's a very fast way to level up and leveling up is very important so that you can find rare Pokemon. So I've evolved two Pokemon now, real quick, once I get out of this animation, I'm gonna show you what level I'm at, I'm at now, and then once I've evolved all of them, we'll come back and I'll show you what's changed. So right now I am at, I am, I just got 3,000 experience points, 3,000. Wow, that was more than I was expecting. Or maybe that was delayed because of the... I think that was delayed because of the Neat Arena. But, you know, I'm 675 out of 15,000 on my way to level 15. And I was quite a bit less after those evolutions. So I'm going to do all these evolutions and then we'll check back and see what level I'm at after that. Okay, so what I just evolved was throughout all of this, Neat Arena to Neat Arena, two Caterpies to Metapod, four Weedles to Kakuna, and actually 10 Pidgeys to Pidgeotto because I evolved nine and that gave me nine Pidgey candies. And then I actually had one Pidgey left and so I just transferred three Pidgeottos and got enough to evolve that last Pidgey. So I evolved 10 Pidgeys and one Rattata. And I have gone from about 4,000 into level 14 to 7,700 through level 15. And like 14 took 15,000 to level up, 15 took 20,000 to level up. So that was a lot of experience points. So if you save up a lot of evolutions, activate a lucky egg, whether you buy one or you get it by leveling up and use them all at once, it's really great and you'll level up super fast. So one thing that's kind of confusing about Pokemon Go that people don't fully understand is gyms. So I'm gonna give you a brief overview. I'm sitting here next to a red gym and I am on the red team, Team Valor, best team. And what's how gyms work basically is that gyms have different levels or prestige levels. And if they're battled by their own team, that raises the prestige. If they're battled by another team, that lowers the prestige. And if the prestige gets lowered 
down to zero, they're kicked out of the gym. So if you have a, a blue gym with four Pokemon, if one person battles it once, maybe twice, the prestige will get kicked down to three if it's a yellow or red team member. And then the lowest level Pokemon gets sent back to the owner. However, if a blue person battles a blue gym, they can up the prestige a level, get it to five, and then leave a Pokemon there. So what I'm gonna try and do, it might be kind of hard because this red gym has some really buff Pokemon in it. It has a 768 Tauros, 798 Arbok, and that Vaporeon. But I'm going to try to up the prestige of this gym so I can leave a Pokemon in there. And if you have a Pokemon left in a gym, there's a place in the shop where there's a little shield that'll show up and you'll get some little perks. So we're gonna try and battle this thing using my Vaporeon Aquafina. Oops, wrong button. Go. So we're gonna try and do this. Gyms can be glitchy, so I don't know if this will work, but I'm gonna try it. And it is, the go sign is, as I said, Gyms can be glitchy. It is, I'm st still seeing the loading icon. So we're gonna give this a little bit. Okay, there it goes. So you tap to do a regular attack. Okay, I'm gonna beat this Tauros, but there's no way Aquafina's gonna survive all three. There we go. So I beat the Tauros, but you only get Aquafina for the, when you're training against your own gym, you can only use one Pokemon. You can't use a full team of six, like when you're battling an enemy gym. And so it's it's much, much harder to beat it. But I gave, gave the gym 503 prestige. So if I heal up my Vaporeon a little bit, and one thing, if you use, if you're battling an opponent gym, your Pokemon can faint and you have to use revives. If you're battling at a uh, friendly gym, you can, uh, what do you call it? If you're battling at a friendly gym, your Pokemon will be left with one HP. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep battling this and get the prestige up to four so I can leave a Pokemon in it. Okay, so that took a while because I could only knock out the Tauros before it knocked out my Vaporeon, but we did up the prestige. The gym is taller now, so I can leave a Pokemon here. I actually think I wanna leave, no, I don't wanna leave my Vaporeon because there's already a Vaporeon here. So there's this button down at the lower left you can click to leave a Pokemon there. I'm gonna sort mine by combat power. And just for excitement, he's gonna be a lot weaker and he's probably gonna be the first Pokemon kicked out of this gym because all these other ones, but it's still pretty cool to leave a Pokemon there So I'm gonna leave Chainsaw the Aerodactyl. No, nope, why did it do that? Click on Chainsaw And there we go. So now if we go to the gym Chainsaw there we go flying high the weakest Pokemon in this gym and there's the Tauros There's the Arbok and there's the Vaporeon and I'm not exactly a hundred percent sure how this works, but if I go to shop uh, up here in the upper right corner, collect now. I have one Pokemon assigned to a gym, so I'll get 500 Stardust and 10 coins for that. And you get more the more Pokemon you have. Okay guys, while we were driving to where we were gonna go, Jubilee was manning my game. Don't Pokemon go and drive, kids. And we found this 633 Tangela, which I have never caught before. And there's pretty much no chance of me succeeding with this Pokemon because I have had horrendous luck the last two days. So, but I'm gonna try, so. One thing you can do is if you hold the ball like this, the smaller the circle is, the smaller the circle is, the higher chance you have of catching it, but the harder it is to hit. So, and it's doing a weird thing where it automatically curves, and I don't know why it's doing that. That's a glitch that needs to be worked out. I'm gonna switch to great balls. And, okay, yep, yeah, it's 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 doing that, that glitch. I don't know how to fix that, but looks like we have to Throw to the, all right, it told me nice. That's a good sign. Yes, <laughs> finally some good luck in this game. Ah, oh, that's such a relief. <laughs> yes. I never have to catch another Tangela again. <laughs> 
and it's super buff too. Vine whip and power whip, sweet. All right, guys. Well, I caught a tangela. Now let's keep going to the park. So we just got back to the park that we uh, that I filmed that other Pokemon Go video did on youtubecom games and my incense just all out of nowhere. I activated incense, just suddenly brought up a a wild Kingler, and I already have a Kingler, but I'm still gonna try and catch it because it's high level and then that and that's exciting. So, well, I hit. Let's see if it stays. Nope, not gonna stay. I'm not, I don't want to use great balls because it's not that important if I don't catch this because I already have one. But, all right, it's doing the fake curveball thing again. I hate that glitch so much. Where? Nearby. Nearby on the on the nearby. On the nearby. Okay, well then once once this battle's over, I'm gonna let's get let's find it. Stupid Kingler. I'm gonna throw three more balls from this and then I'm gonna run because I don't I, I don't need it that much. Oh, that said great. Got it. Got the Kingler. Ah, stupid notifications. Keep popping up while I'm trying to film. Rapidash is nearby. We are finding this Rapidash right now. All right, so we found the Rapidash. Jubilee already caught it. Hers was CP 800. Mine is 89. So... Yay for weak Pokemon, but I'm gonna use Great Balls on it because I'm not gonna risk it. Uh, I'm not gonna risk losing it. So, there's a bunch of people around us who have who are looking for it, and it broke out. Okay. Come on. Okay, now it's doing the fake curveball thing again. All right. Come on. Thank God. <laughs> I got it. A weak ass Rapidash that I will never use in battle, but I get it in the Pokedex. So since my battery is getting low, I have one last tip for you guys, and it has to do with hatching eggs. So eggs you can't hatch by driving down the road because it knows that you're not walking, you're moving too fast. But if you're in a car and moving slow enough, like less than 10 miles an hour is safe. Some people think it's less than 20, but I haven't experienced that. But less than 10 miles an hour for sure will register as distance for the egg. Now make sure you're doing this in a safe area, obviously like in a parking lot, and don't be like staring at it while you're driving, you know, like just like, you just have to have the game open. So since I am close to hatching a 10 kilometer egg, I'm actually only 0 .07 kilometers away from hatching this egg. We're gonna do it right now because I want to see what super awesome thing we get. So we're gonna drive around this parking lot. Oh, now it's the clo- Oh, my egg's hatching, my egg's hatching. Great. I'll pull over. All right, guys, let's see what it is. This is a 10 kilometer egg, so it's gonna be something big. Onyx! Yes! I don't have one of those. 279. Okay, that's not very good at all. <laughs> I mean, it's almost maxed out, but I'm still happy because that's a totally brand new Pokemon. Sweet. All right, well, as you can see, there's an Ivysaur and a Bulbasaur nearby, so I'm gonna put a new egg in, and then we are gonna go look for this. Uh, we're gonna go find this freaking. oh, okay, never mind. That was the last use of that incubator. All right, guys, let's go find the Ivysaur. We found the Ivysaur, Jubilee caught it. I don't know if I'm gonna catch it, but I'm gonna try. Okay, got it in the ball on the first throw. First throw! What a boss! Yes! Yes! You know what's funny? I don't have a Bulbasaur yet. If only you could breed in this game. All right guys, that's the end of my Pokemon Go tips and tricks video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below. It helps me out a lot. And I want you to answer two things for me in the comment section below. Number one, what's the strongest Pokemon you have caught on Pokemon Go so far? For me, it's that Ivysaur. My Vaporeon is my strongest Pokemon, but I leveled it up a bit. And the second thing is, 
I want to bring more Pokemon Go content to this channel. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a really great game that a lot of people are playing, but I'm not sure exactly what you guys want to see. So also let me know down in the comments below what kind of content you want to see, whether it's more tips, whether it's just me playing the game, just whatever, any ideas you have. So that'd be awesome if you could let me know down below. But for now, it's time that I go to bed and take a shower because I'm very sweaty. So that's all I have for now. So until next time, book fans. Everybody wants to go to cash. Oh. Everybody, 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 everybody wants to get down.